Welcome to my YouTube channel, Rick Serwitz Watercolor. This is the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial for my painting, Misty Mountain. The reference for this painting was a simple sketch and value study on the bottom of this page in my sketchbook. This is a light pencil sketch on a small sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor. It's 8 by 10 inches. I'm going to begin by putting a, a large wash on with a 1 inch flat brush. For this painting I'm using two colors, royal blue and sap green. I'll use these two colors uh, mix to give a blue-green tone and I'll mix a variety of values. I'll use my value study in my sketchbook as a guide as I put this first wash down. This is a light middle value and uh, you can see that I'm going over top of one shape right into another because I'm not seeing uh, these as each individual shapes or objects. I'm seeing them rather as a big large area of value that I'm going to cover most of this page with. I'm going to leave just the whitest whites. Once this is dry, this is actually going to be a, a very light uh, middle value, almost just a light value. I'm going to bring this wash all the way down from the sky, over the mountains, over the trees, where the tree shapes are going to be. I'm going to bring that right into the side of the this building, this little shack here that's uh, sitting on this mountain. And this is just the shadow side of this building, and that will stop at the edge of the snow. And then you can see I've carried that into uh, an area underneath the roof line where that will be cast in shadow. And then I'm going to continue that down to put some of this uh, foreground and more in a shadow. I'm also going to uh, put a mark here to differentiate where the the, the slope of the land is. Uh, there's a couple different rolls to the land and so I'm going to put some value there to this to help show that. My initial wash was put on wet on dry but now my paper is wet and uh, I'm going to take a, a wash that has a little bit more of the royal blue in it and I'm going to start dropping some, some paint into uh, the saturated paper and it's going to give the suggestion of some softer distant trees. I'm continuing that wash around the uh, building structure here and because the actual elements of the building itself are still dry, I keep a nice clean edge as I bring these uh, softer trees into this wet on wet wash. It will only diffuse in the areas where the paper is wet. So this is a combination of working on dry paper, working on saturated paper, and I'll be working a little bit on damp paper that's somewhere in between saturated and dry. So here I've taken a mixture that has a little darker value still pretty fluid, a little less water, but still pretty fluid and it's uh, still uh, leaning towards the blue side. I'm going over top of some of these trees that I put in uh, first which have gotten quite light as that color diffused into the saturated paper. So my paper is still uh, fairly wet. It's, it's wet enough to avoid getting blossoms. It's still letting this color diffuse. Uh, and I'm going to come back here to the left side and just continue that a little bit behind the, the left side of this structure. Now I've added a bit more of the sap green to my mixture and I'm going to put uh, some more trees still working wet on wet uh, but I'm going to put some more of these, these trees more with a bit of a, a greener cast to them on the left side of my composition and I'm going to bring uh, some of that across 
I don't want that color to be isolated on the left, so I'm going to bring some of that here onto the right side and give a, a touch of some of this, this uh, greener mixture. Let that just diffuse on top of some of the, the cooler, bluer tones that I had put down first. And I'm going to take some of this, this dark middle value and start to make some some marks on the, the structure itself. Here I'm using line to help describe some of the edges and uh, I'm not just outlining I'm putting touches of value down in a variety of shapes, small shapes, small lines just uh, dashes and dots and then uh, some lines a little longer than others just describing the, the edge of some of these uh, different shapes. I'm going to bring some of this darker middle value across to paint the entire side of this shadowed side of the building. So you can see that that tone just kind of gets lost on the left side as it disappears into the trees there because they're the same value, same color. My sketch had a shape of a distant mountain and I'm going to take some of this uh, middle value, dark middle value and I just give an indication of some of the edges of this mountain. I don't want it fully described and I'm taking clear water just soften that and gradate that initial uh, stroke of value that I've put down. And I'm going to do the same thing here in a few spots on this. So it just gives the uh, idea that there's a mountain out there in the distance. It's by no means going to be a lot of detail. Uh, it's just mostly dealing with edge and value. I'm going to... Want, I want this to soften up a little bit. I don't want a lot of hard edges, so I'm going to spray that with a fine mist and let some of that run around just to help um, enhance the feeling of, of a misty fog. On the left side I have uh, the, uh, a nearer hillside, mountainside, indicated here behind these trees. So I'm going to take a little darker value here and just put some touches of value on that edge and then I want to soften it uh, with some clear water. And actually, I'll take that spray and soften those edges up again. So just a suggestion of an, an edge of a, of a mountainside there with some trees on it and some fog floating around. Now my paper is completely dry. and I'm going to come in with a, a fairly dark value here and uh, give an indication of some trees right behind this uh, little shack. And uh, remember, I'm just using two colors here, so all these are mixtures using royal blue and sap green. These evergreens uh, will, will kind of stand as individual trees as they get to the tops, but as they come down lower, they start to blend together into a larger shape. And I'm going to, uh, at some point here, I'm going to soften the bottom edge a little bit just to help enhance the feeling of the mist on the side of this mountain. Here, I'll take the, the fine mist again and soften this edge just so it gets lost. I'm going to extend this line of trees that I started on the left side. I'm going to extend it on the right side using the same uh, mixture of color and value. And as I put this in, it's going to help give further definition to the building structure because it's acting as a negative space around the lighter edges of the, the building. I've extended the tree line. Now I'm going to take a darker uh, value this similar mixture to what I was just using on the trees 
and I'm going to darken the value on the side of this uh, building structure. Just working with a, a number four general purpose brush. The one I'm actually using is a Aqua Elite from Princeton. It's a synthetic brush, but it, uh, it holds quite a bit of paint and has a nice point to it. So just, uh, and, and it carries quite a bit of paint. You can see I've done most of this side without having to reload my brush. So now uh, that's a much darker value and it, it feels like it's more in shadow. I'm going to take some of that darker value also and just put some touches of it on top of some of the brushwork that I've already done. I'm just going to move around a few of the edges on this structure. Uh, this is going to be an area where I have my, my strongest areas of contrast because I have some of the pure white of the paper there against some of the, the darkest values that I have in the painting. And I'm going to going to fill this door in just to give the, the feeling that it's like an open door with some that you're looking through with some things laying in here. It's just kind of an old structure up here on this mountainside. And this is a, just a, a, a nice little painting just to experiment with value and get good practice with different types of edges, soft edges, hard edges, working wet on dry, working wet on wet. And uh, it's obviously it's not a a detailed rendering of anything. It's uh, a little bit more than a value study, but it's a, I think it's a good practice piece for people who want to uh, brush up on working on different um, moisture paper, getting different edges, hard edges, soft edges, and uh, working with different size brushes, large and small, even though it's in a small format. And you can see here I've switched to a very large brush and I'm gonna I want to bring in a darker wash to deepen the value on this this area that would be in the foreground to help differentiate it a little bit more spatially from from the middle ground I'm going in again with a even a darker value here it's, uh, it's still my sap green and royal blue, but a uh, very pigment rich mixture. And I'm just using this number four round brush. Just trying to create some interest and help define some edges a little bit more. Now I want to create a little bit more interest in the area here of these trees. So I'm going to take my rigger brush. It's a number one rigger brush. And I'm going to uh, just give an indication of some of these old trees, old dried out trees here. Uh, they call them old snags. Just take a, a fairly dark value in this rigger and make the trunk and then just pull some of the dried branches and uh, off, off to the side just and space them out quite a bit. Just give indication of of some of these old dried out trees hanging around so it's a it's a it's a much different look than the, uh, the shapes that I print painted earlier on in the process it doesn't take a lot just enough to to suggest that there's some of these just standing around here and you want to vary the spacing of them and change the height and the, the number of branches on them so they don't all look the same I want to enhance the, the suggestion that it's kind of foggy and misty up here. So I've turned this upside down and I'm taking uh, a glaze here and just placing it on the edge of the, the structure here on the roof line. And it's a fairly fluid mixture that I'm putting down. And I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm just going to just soften that up, diffuse that color and let it run. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more over here on the edge of the snow bank. So you, you want to turn this upside down so it doesn't run run back onto your your clean edge that you have there, your nice sharp edge. Although it's going to get a little bit of overrun, which is kind of nice because it adds a little bit to the to the, the hazy, misty feeling, but you don't want to cover it completely. So I've turned it upside down for that. 
and it's wet there now that I've sprayed it so I could add a little bit of paint let it run and I want to add just a little bit more uh, into this um, wet area and, and diffuse that and, and just let that run a little bit I want to go a little bit deeper with the value here in a few places so here I'm putting this uh, darker value on the edge here of that that light area and then I'm going to take some clear water here and soften that rather than the spray bottle because I don't want it to run everywhere and I'm going to take that dark value and put some of it here on the side of this building just to deepen that shadowed side of the, the little building here and there's a few more edges here that I'm going to define with this darker value so I'm going to put some here in this little pocket of uh, where the edge of the structure and the, the banks of snow come together there and you can see how I've left that light shape from the front of the building run straight down into the the bank of the snow without any line without separating them let them become one light shape there is a linkage of that value here I'm defining a little bit more of that bank by putting a wash there and then lightening it with uh, some clear water and softening that here I'm gonna uh, put a little darker value in the foreground here not quite as dark as I think I'd like it to be then just soften it with that fine mist spray I'm going to use that fine mist spray again close to the paper to soften the edges and break through some of those edges a little bit just to make it feel a little bit more misty and foggy and I'm going to put a white mat on it get a good look at it and there's my painting Misty Mountain this is a good little painting that you can do to get some practice working with wet on dry, wet on wet, working with soft edges, hard edges, and working with light and dark. The limited palette helps you see value without having to worry a lot about color. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel or join my mailing list to make sure that you're notified of my latest releases and receive current updates. You can join by clicking on one of the boxes on the right side of the screen or you'll find the links in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.